Good evening, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savagery, with our beloved Alok. We continue Book 3, The Book of the Divine Mother, Canto 3, The House of the Spirit and the New Creation, page 321, uh, probably last two lines. Yes. Would you like to read? I'll read after the break. <clears throat> there, nature on her dumb spiritual couch, immutably transcendent, knows her source. So on one side, nature goes into a state of utter quiescence. And on the other hand, it knows where it's coming from, the divine Shakti. I asked Amal, about the word dumb, and he said it always means quiet or silent. It's never the pejorative yeah, yeah, yeah. that we would use. And uh, this is a crucial um, aspect in Sri Yoga that nature also has a divine origin. It's a very simple thing, but very often it is missed. So in traditional yoga, nature is nature. And this is the soul which comes from the divine. Where does nature come from? There are different explanations. But nothing goes beyond Maya. Though Sri Krishna says even this Maya is my Maya. But uh, its full import is that because nature in its origin is divine. Therefore all its movements are ignorantly, imperfectly trying to recreate that truth. And therefore they can be transformed into their divine equivalent. Otherwise there was no possibility of transforming it. When we asked Mother about this, uh, she said that uh, nature had her own way of reaching the Supreme. Yes. But she didn't care whether it took a million years yes. or ten million years. But when Mother showed her what could be so beautiful, nature agreed to collaborate. 58. This is a huge message event. message of 1958. A huge event. 57th, uh, 1957, November, she had this experience. Yes. Material nature accepted the new substance yes. and it understood that it is going to make her joy manifold. It's, you know, it's not going to diminish her in any way, but make the play even more fascinating. So then she has accepted. That was the message, oh, mother, material nature. And to the stir of multitudinous worlds ascends unmoved in a perpetual calm. So when nature withdraws into its quiescent state, then we enter that state where one is just giving a consent, allowing things to pass through. Many yogis reach this point where nature continues its mechanical activity while they are in a state of inner quietude. All causing all sustaining and aloof, the witness looks from his unshaken poise, an eye immense regarding all things done. This eye immense is in the Vedas, the image of Vishnu, who is described as an eye extended in the vast, who is watching the play, detached from it and letting it happen, unrolled by Apart, at peace, above creation's stir, immersed in the eternal's altitudes, he abode defended in the shoreless self, companioned only by the all-seeing one. So it doesn't mean that there are not multitudes hidden there. But <laughs> the first experience is that you are alone with the Lord. And then, of course, many things will happen, which Yoginda will reveal to us. But by then, he has entered into that, he has gone past the cosmic consciousness. So what is the experience of his mind, his life? A mind too mighty to be bound by thought. The mind has become not only a free, but a universal intelligence. So normally, how does the mind get bound by thought? Mind is capable of entering into this freedom. 
एंड वास्टनेस बट बाई स्ट्रेसिंग अपॉन वन थॉट वन आइडिया वन व्यू पॉइंट वर्ड स्टिल वन ओपिनियन इट गेट्स बाउंड एंड टाइड इन टू दैट सो दैट्स हाउ इट बिकम्स बाउंड बाई थॉट एंड देन ऑल वंस लाइफ वन इज डिफेंडिंग इट रिजिडली वेर एज दिस माइंड हैज बिकम ए फ्री इंटेलिजेंस दिस अ होल स्टोरी इन रिलेटेड टू दिस इन सून अ शेप स्टोरी इन द वेदास वेयर ही इज टाइड एट द स्टेक and he is a sacrificial victim <laughs> so varuna comes and cuts away the knot of the mind three knots and then throws it up so mind becomes a vast free intelligence cuts the middle knot so life becomes an unbounded life and the third knot throws it down so that is the knot of the very physical nature which holds back the soul this is shobindo in his own beautiful way in three lines summarizing it a mind too mighty to be bound by thought a life too boundless for the play in space a soul without borders unconvinced of time so it become freed from all forms all the entire play someone asked your window what does uh, it look like when you look at the world of human from the supramental standpoint does it even take interest he says yes the supermind takes interest in worldly things but not in the way we take it so then the person persisted he said half jokingly half in jest well from that standpoint you don't see much difference between cats and dogs and humans <laughs> to that extent it but this flame if this is not the air then it's hardly any difference the yes. life is like that so he says from that standpoint even it, to one of the disciples he says who who has made you believe that you are superior to an animal <laughs> so tell me i asked tell me about the word unconvinced of mm, time mm. and she said it was more like unconvicted by time mm. interesting course, yes. interesting vision time is a in the spiritual sense is a field of for the play of forces in the original sense so by the play of forces it uh, manifest things step by step sequence by sequence and it has something similar to when we are bound by fate when we are freed from fate and we are able to see all the three together so then the play of time which can produce various appearances so its classic example of being unconvinced by time is when shurbindo uh, is told that sir are you sure about this world it's going into darkness so first he says that uh, things are bad may become worse or worse than worst if that were possible yes but he has seen the light which is dawning yes and then he says that uh, even if all were to be smashed i would look beyond the smash to the coming dawn that is called unconvinced by time because the play of time creating situation circumstances appearance is not caught in that it knows for sure that mm. there is and of course one has to be freed from the grip of time for that he felt the extinction of the world's long pain he became the unborn self that never dies he joined the sessions of infinity so what what a marvelous i mean it's, it's really <laughs> indescribable <laughs> joined the there is a yagna going on <laughs> sessions of infinity uh, beings of that stature are meeting together and he is joining them <laughs> to <laughs> on the cosmic murmur primal loneliness fell the entire uh, noise and sounds and everything that is happening in the creation that entire field of vibration has come to a stillness and quieted annulled was the contact formed with time born things empty grew nature's wide community so that's why he keeps saying sri bindu's compassion still he kept contact this is <laughs> he had come for this work
He had no reason to do that. All things were brought back to their formless seed. So this is the description what happens in the supermind. All things in their essence, the formless seed, it's, it's what happens during pralayas. So when you are, you know, the whole creation goes into a complete destruction mode, then forms are destroyed, but the essence, the seed of things is always preserved. It's figuratively explained in the story of Noah's Ark, where all these samples are kept. Now, sample is in a seed form and they will emerge again. The world was silent for a cyclic hour. Although the afflicted nature he had left maintained beneath him her broad numberless fields, her, mur her enormous act receding failed remote as if a soulless dream at last had ceased. So here again in these few lines, Shobindo is um, revealing one of the differences between his yoga and a traditional understanding. So in a traditional understanding, the big catch is, for example, in the Buddhist understanding, if there is no individual self, then who is bound and who is free? Then there is the Advaita. So you wake up from a dream. The problem is you wake up from a dream, you are free. But the multitude continues to be engaged in that. Only you are free. You need not get into the dream. Then Sri says that if there was only one self, then freedom of one person should automatically lead to the waking up of all the other so-called self. If there is one self which is caught. So there is one self and the many. So this is something similar to the Gita, where the Gita also seems to indicate about multiplicity of souls. So this is just a metaphysical point because often people ask. So there is one self. There are also multitude, many souls where each is a is there to manifest one mode of that one self. So in that sense, there are many. When we get to book 11, yes, he'll there, show it all to all us. To us. None, no voice came down from the high silences. None answered from our desolate solitudes. A stillness of cessation reigned. The wide, immortal hush before the gods are born. A universal force awaited mute the veiled transcendence ultimate decree. So he's entered that state before the play of time, before space, before form, in that primal hush, waiting for her to send down a word. But before the word will come, an experience yes. about the blueprint that the Divine Mother has in her heart, that we can start. Then suddenly there came a downward look, as if a sea exploring its own depths, a living oneness widened at its core and joined him to unnumbered multitudes, a bliss, a light, a power, a flame-white love caught all into a soul immense embrace. Existence found its truth on oneness pressed, and each became the self and space of all. The great world rhythms were heartbeats of one soul. To feel was a flame discovery of God. All mind was a single harp of many strings. All life a song of many meeting lives. For worlds were many, but the self was one. This knowledge now was made a cosmos seed. This seed was cased in the safety of the light. It needed not a sheath of ignorance. So, as he is waiting, then the experience starts, a very marvelous experience. Then suddenly there came a downward look. So he has already gone past everything. So as if the whole 
being is turned again to this field of creation mother describes this experience very beautifully in one of her prayers that turn towards the earth that is the command she receives so she turns towards the earth and sees all the her children locked in somber struggle all this is a very powerful experience so there comes a downward look as if a sea exploring its own depths it is not something other but it's an extension of the one a living oneness widened at its core and joined him to unnumbered multitudes the entire range of creation all beings everything all they are all included in that oneness and what is the nature of this oneness a bliss a light a power a flame white love caught all into a soul immense embrace so the nature of this uh, the consciousness which takes all things together it is anand me it is chaitanya me <laughs> it is prem me madhurya me so it is and what kind of love that carries takes all beings multitudes in its soul embrace existence found its truth on oneness breast and each became the self and space of all this is the world she wants to create and she said that this is going to be the gnostic individual so she said but we are far from it so what we are trying to we talk about gnostic communities she says we cannot have it unless we have the gnostic individual and then she explains very beautifully she says that is where the yoga is moving now so now after 1958 mm. um she said now wherever there are people who are open to shirbindo's teaching who have declared within themselves that they are disciples of shirbindo it's a very interesting passage declared themselves within they feel the call and they have declared themselves within they are now connected together and now we are all in that noah's ark supramental ark so each one is doing the yoga for everyone else so if there are and she gives an example if there are 50 persons and one person is doing the yoga she says then that one person is doing the yoga for all the 50 so he'll find his progress greatly delayed but if all the 50 are doing yoga then everybody does his own yoga and advances rapidly no choice about it <laughs> why should one choose that is the experience naturally at that point and that's what mother and shirobindo did when they started on the journey they had this choice whether we go alone uh, have the siddhi then come back or we take everybody together and the mother says the choice was spontaneous besides shirobindo said even if you isolate yourself by the very fact you will enter into cosmic consciousness you will automatically take in the difficulties and problems of everyone so this is the sense of each became the self and space of all he writes in another line one man's perfection still can, still can save the world and that is the reason why she had started collective meditations and she gives describes that also that why collective meditations were started in the ashram and then in the playground of course she says there are different movements because now there is a collectivity which is formed so the original purpose is this that so that this whole mass progresses because the two are now interconnected the great world rhythms were heart beats of one soul so what was happening in this heart was getting translated into the world because it was the heart of the lord which was beating within mother describes this experience very powerfully in 1962 where she says that she had become the heart of creation and with each pulsation there was love which was going into the cosmos to feel was a flame discovery of god how wonderful this is i mean <laughs> and what what was happening to the mind all mind was a single harp of many strings so there was no more confusion misunderstandings clash debates discussions 
because that mind had become a universal mind, a single mind where with a harp of many strings, the original, not just Santur, but uh, <laughs> whatever the original mind with many, many strings, countless strings. So whatever was happening in anybody's mind, it was automatically getting translated. And mother described this experience even at the physical level in the brain. So whatever is happening, somebody has a stroke, it gets translated into her own brain. Like that, you know, that it's a unimaginable experience. It's, it's really unimaginable. Shobindo says in one of his poems, The Cosmic Man, he says, uh, I have wrapped the world in my wider self. London and Paris and Tokyo, my spirits seeing are. Man, few good deeds and countless misdeeds take place within my single heart. I am the bird he feeds and saves, the bird he slays. I am the life of the village and the continent. I feel each stab and every kiss. All is taking place in that. Of course, quite naturally because it's a totality of that experience. So, it gets translated yes. in a very different way. Not the way we experience it. But uh, all these stabs of creation are born and all the kisses, the love, all that he bears. All life is song of many meeting lives. This is what she wants us to become. So that when we meet, it's not uh, with arms folded to wrestle, but a song of many meeting lives. They are coming together and becoming a single harmony. For worlds were many, but the self was one. So this is what uh, we need to understand from all these dances and orchestra music that you know you have many countless people singing or acting but ultimately there is one director or the one master, one conductor who is conducting the opera and it should be as harmonious as that. Here we can only have it for a few moments during the dance or the music. But after that, everybody, I was better, isn't it? Better than <laughs> that and all the jealousies and ambition comes back. But it is a symbol of what life but would or should become. There's an excellent film on a conductor, one of the greatest of all time, Herbert von Karajan. If you can see that film, you'll be moved by it. Wow. He says at one point, if my work is not finished, I'll simply have to come again and finish it. This knowledge now was made a cosmos seed. So all the, all creation and the worlds have emerged from this truth. That's why there is a link of oneness, whether we like it or not. And this we have to learn from the moonlander. If you can communicate, that means there is a means of connectedness. <laughs> if you can receive the light from billion light years away, that means there is a connectedness. Just that we don't know the means, we don't have the equipment. So the whole creation is interconnected because at its core there is oneness. So whether we like it or not, it is, it is interconnected. That's why he says the individual and the mass have a mutual effect on each other. And that was the problem of the old yogas. Because even when they felt this world should become better, but the masses are far, far behind. So what does the yogi do? He ultimately withdraw. Now Shurabindo has that power, that consciousness, which can change things here. Otherwise, as we advance, a time comes when there is such a dislocation. Even when you discover oneness, the world is far away from that. You are regarded as a mad person, you know. Chotinarayanji story where... He met this man whom everybody in the village used to call mad. And his name was Bhula. And Chutnaranji was very keen for, uh, you know, he wanted to know somebody who really knows God. So he asked him one day, 
when he saw him all alone bola bola so after some time he turned yes he said tum sach mein pagal ho are you actually mad <laughs> he remained quiet for a while he said na nah. no nah. <laughs> he said phir kya ho <laughs> what are you <laughs> he said hum sadhu hain <laughs> sadhu is a way of saying i am a sadhu so he asked bhagwan ko dekhe ho have you seen god he said what else is there to see <laughs> dekhne ka kya hai to he said humko dikhaoge <laughs> will you show <laughs> bole ye rasta tumhara nahi hai this is not your way he said what is my way he said i can see you have another way it is already open for you your guru is there he said which guru he says yes he is there behind you he has told me and he is going to open the path for everyone that he is there leading you or something like the world guru i am forgetting the exact word he is there so he didn't know anything about mother and shivind he discovered little later he had not even known the guru is already there he doesn't know which guru <laughs> he said you are not this path is not for because you know they are exceptional beings uh, they cannot after that stay in the world so it's much safer to be called as a madman people will avoid your company and you are safe the fellow who used to work with me in the matrimonia gardens went to this uh, great japanese master mm. who was giving vipassana okay and the whole crowd walks before him and when my friend gets to him he says oh but you are from another nest but welcome <laughs> masters know it they know it it needed not a sheet of ignorance here it is put in a sheet of ignorance then from the trance of that tremendous clasp by the way this truth of uh, oneness is what gets translated into this world as the law of sacrifice which is described in the gita as prajapati build the world by the law of sacrifice so in a very practical sense it means this that you may put your ahuti in the yagna what you will receive will be a prasad which is not based on how much you have put and how much you it doesn't work like that <laughs> it's it. so because today someone was telling me that asking me very privately came to ask i'm sharing with you if there is money where should i give should i give to the ashram or should i give to outside centers so i knew that she has already made up her mind so i kept quiet and then she said actually i am thinking so i said yes i know you are thinking <laughs> i should give it to the ashram because uh, it is here that i have got things so i should give to that i said yes that is one attitude <laughs> she said no no what is the straight answer i want a straight <laughs> answer from you i said straight answer is go by what your inner being tells you <laughs> she says then she started justifying but outside there are other i said there are no others if you want a straight answer <laughs> mother is everywhere mother's work is going on everywhere but you give where you deep inside if you feel if you want to have that connection that i have got this much and i am giving this much then that is another kind of play but it is not yagna it mm. is calculation and bargaining mm. but true yagna is where you give what you will get others will get it's not your concern and you are giving to the divine mother but that's that is the real attitude so from this law of oneness comes in in this creation it gets into the law of yagna so that's why in this world we will see when we give when we are expecting it from that source we are making a fool of ourselves but when you give something to the world as buddha has said it will come back many fold the problem is we are just looking in the wrong direction <laughs> it's right <quite> there <laughs> the the divine <laughs> swiggy man is waiting tapping at us are i have got a parcel from divine oh, no I, this fellow is not giving me i gave so much so again tapping you after some time he because play of time no so he goes then you say god you gave me nothing he says so many times i sent him to knock at your yes. door you were so busy engaged in another human being where you were <laughs> expecting and if you don't expect from any human being the whole inner core will open up 
with all the love and joy, you will be flooded with it because you are expecting from nothing and nobody. So that is the original sense of yagna. When you have offered, offer to the divine. Shavinda goes on to say, in your giving and receiving also. So when you give a gift, you should give it not to the person but to the divine in the person. And when you receive, receive it as it is being given by the divine, coming from the divine, so that you are not ob obliged to anybody. It's a, it's very difficult. It's a tough lesson. I mean, earlier I, I this lesson one Russian boy taught me. U.S. one of the trips and my usual, you know, is that sattvic mind. They want to give something like you know, buy some something for you. No, 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 no. Then this boy told me, you still have the ego of the receiver. I said, yeah, you are right. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> okay, whatever you wish. Now, after that, that got broken. So things come naturally and spontaneously, it is fine. But obviously not, you should not bring in any kind of even movement or tremor of, you know. But what comes, comes. What doesn't come, doesn't come. What goes, goes. Because then it's a vaster yagna. But it should go with this idea. It is going to the divine in the person. So that you even forget. So this is the truth of yagna. Because this is the secret truth. Which in outer life we try to recreate. Unfortunately, Shubindu says, in, in life, because of this law of yagna, even if you don't want to give, nature will extract the sacrifice from you. You will end up giving either to the family yes. who will blow it up <laughs> and say tada bye bye to you or you will leave with some crore lying in the bank or some lakhs and if you have not put a varis the bank fellow will have a good time or the government. So it it's you cannot, it is bound to because that's the interconnectedness of creation. Or maybe if you don't give to anyone, then the doctors will have it. <laughs> so, you shouldn't forget the lawyers and the doctors and the priests. Then, from the trance of that tremendous clasp and from the throbbings of that single heart and from the naked spirit's victory, a new and marvelous creation rose. So the basis of new creation is oneness, conscious oneness. Here it is forgotten oneness. Oneness is there, so it asserts itself. So we say, Mera wo kyo chala gaya? why this went away, then you bring in law of karma, as if you are individual karma and a Chitragupta sitting out there. But when we are conscious of this oneness, then the new creation begins to flower in us. It needs the soil of oneness. It cannot flower on the basis of division. As long as there is the ego self, there cannot be new creation. It's an impossibility. Whatever one may do, everything else one may do, sit, closed eyes, wearing only a langota for 10 years, nothing will happen. One has to keep hold of this oneness, then go through life. Mother has named about 12 flowers the new creation. Yes. Yes, yes. Very special. And she actually gave them two names. She started giving them for Oroville. Yes, yes. Beauty of Oroville, charm of Oroville, realization of Oroville. And one day she said to Tara, we have to extend it a bit. So we'll call it also charm of the new creation. Yes. yes. Beauty of the new creation. Yes. Now, what is this new creation we talk about? Incalculable, outflowing infinitudes, laughing out an unmeasured happiness, lived their innumerable unity. What a wonderful description. Infinitudes. Each one is conscious of the infinity. And therefore, one with all. The great poet A.E. wrote to Sri Aurobindo and criticized him for using so many times these, line, these words like infinitudes. And Sri Aurobindo wrote back and he said, I have seen them. Yes. Or I have experienced them. Yes. What else can I write? <laughs> Um, 
worlds where the being is unbound and white bodied unthinkably the egoless self so there is a body mm. body is there bodied unthinkably beyond our comprehension yes. the egoless self rapture of beatific energies join time to the timeless poles of a single joy no more this antagonism is healed so in time the rhythms of time recreate the rhythms of the timeless white vasts were seen where all is wrapped in all there were no contraries no sundered parts all by spiritual links were joined to all now to have these spiritual links you have to first get rid of all these false links me and my family that's why it is going away joint family this family how can there be a vaster consciousness if we are limited to this little understanding then my mohalla my village my language my state all these links with which we are so strongly identified mm -hmm. becomes that much a bar between us and the new creation in the new creation we can understand them but as long as we are tied to links of the ego that's why the true spiritual family that was one of the purpose of you know mm. all uh, all these collective congregations that people come together and discover a new kind of unity the uh, shubindu describes it in the synthesis that in initially the psychic being in its development it quite naturally wants to be with those who share a common aspiration it starts from there it's no more based on common interest common funds common this common birth which is the most ridiculous in fact at one place when someone asked you bindo uh, i somehow don't feel that kind of attachment to my parents as i used to feel what is it he was confused whether it's i'm progressing or i am going down because you are supposed to be feel you know parents duty and all that so shubindu says this idea of duty towards the parent is a social idea it has no spiritual truth in it so then he speaks about the spiritual truth he says it is based on a tamasic physical association and it drops off as one advances and it is good if it goes away this is one of the signs of progress which goes unnoticed it's not some big experience but inwardly it drops away why because you have gone past it it doesn't mean you will be you won't do what you have to do you'll do but that kind of an attachment that kind of you know identification that is gone for now you are experiencing this largeness so we are joined by spiritual links and bound indissolubly to the one and we must understand the difference between spiritual link and ideative link ideative link forms ideologies and people who are followers of a same ideology religious links they create cults but spiritual link it really transcends all these barriers it's a deeper consciousness and bound indissolubly to the one each was unique but took all lives as his own it's not a monotone each is unique one mode of manifestation of the divine but he takes all others so he is expressing that in every one this experience he can have and the others each one is expressing some other aspect of the divine he shubindu says that the supramental life is not going to be a monotone much more than what the mind can create it is going to bring out because it's after all infinity and following out these tones of the infinite recognized in himself the universe a splendid center of infinity's world so you are conscious of the infinity and this center the psychic being which is being through which all the infinity is pouring in finite forms pushed to its zenith height its last expanse felt the divinity of its own self bliss repeated in its numberless other selves at one place he says the divine soul reproduces itself in other bodies that was the whole original idea the masters used to do it so each one as he rises to the zenith as his or her own actually this his or her goes away 
extended family it recognizes that you know all these are beings who are together in and yet they are all together in a still larger oneness so it's an amazing experience it took up tirelessly into its scope persons and figures of the impersonal as if prolonging in a ceaseless count in a rapturous multiplication sum the recurring decimals of eternity oh, that's the most marvelous law each point is a point of eternity so one is conscious of that and as you go to the zenith you take all these lives which are connected as a special mode of manifestation just three lines then we will stop because they are worth pondering none was a part none lived for himself alone including my own progress my own experiences my own yoga the subtlest of illusions of the separate self each lived for god in him and god in all each soulness inexpressibly held the whole what beautiful i think we should stop here you know worth meditating upon